Abel, Babel, Dibble Bubble. You know, here we are once again. That we come face to face. You know, last time I think we ever came in contact was uh, Beyond the Bank. But of course, you know, who made it to the final six? But that doesn't mean that you ain't a great competitor. You know, you were one of the people that made me really nervous on losing this, on losing that competition. So I get a little bit of nervousness in me, but you know, there's one thing that I do and that's not backing down. How do you think I got this? You know, I took an elbow, I got back up, took a fight and I won. And that's what I'm doing to you, baby. I'm still getting another win. I'm gonna be 2-0, baby. So show me what you got. Cause me, I have nothing to prove because I'm always victorious. TV Nation, I'm still here. I hope you realize that. That's why I'm here right now in London, England for this super show. Because I decided to chop someone down to size by the name of the Hammer. Now Hammer, I don't have a quarrel with you. You call yourself a dominant force, you probably proved to be one. But you also have to look in the history books, because I'm there too. You have to understand that I am also a dominant force, but not one that you can recognize. Ever since I stepped foot in a BTB ring, I've been nothing more than a bounty hunter of this entire roster. That is my namesake. The Cryptic One is a bounty hunter of E-Fed Wrestling. I will take down anyone at any time that I choose. In this instance, it's a super show because the hammer will get chopped down to size by someone who will be deemed as that nightmare that you've been waiting to have. It's time you finally earned competition. Because unlike some of these ingrates that are on this roster, sometimes opportunity needs to be given. Sometimes to be proven wrong is always necessary. So I urge you to prove me wrong right as soon as this bell rings tonight. Because you have to understand, the second it does, I'm not holding back. The second the bell rings, right now, consider your career to be put to sleep. Consider your career to fade to black. Consider the hammer as a broken tool of Ethan Wrestling, of BTB, of every single dream you've ever had. This is where it all comes to an end. BTB lights out. I was going to go easy on you, not to hurt your feelings, but I'm only going to get this one chance. It's just a feeling I've got. Like something's about to happen. But I don't know what. If that means what I think it means, we're in trouble. Rising sun. Junior Ishla. And the match with you before my championship match. A nice little warm up. I'm gonna teach you though. I'm gonna teach you why you shouldn't mess with me. I'm gonna give you a little pre-show, a little preview of what's gonna to happen to you in our championship match. The match I take my belt back, take it from you, Junior, tonight, 
You're in for it. I'm gonna beat your face in and I'm gonna stomp you out. Really, Junior? You're not championship material. You look scared. You look like you bit off more than you can chew. But you know what? Soon enough, that belt won't be your problem. It'll be mine. So I'm taking it back. Rising sun, rising wood, son of old school. Yeah. <laughs> Son of old school. You ain't even close. You ain't even the same caliber as your pops. I think that's probably why the only reason why you got your belt. It's because of your daddy. But you got it. Absolutely. Tonight, I'm gonna cripple you, Junior. Shame. I'm gonna make you bleed. I'm gonna hurt you. I'm gonna make you wish that this is the only match you're gonna have with me. But it isn't. So you're gonna get more. Rising Sun, keep that belt nice and keep it clean. I'm taking it back. It's bad enough I'm gonna have to get the stench off of everybody that held it. Stench of failure. That's all everybody is in the native states division. There's failures with it. Not like me. That's my belt. I'm sick of seeing it where it is. So Junior tonight. If you get your ass whooping, I'll see you, and I'll take my belt back. But tonight, I'm just going to take your pride, and I'm going to leave you laying there, hurting, wishing this was it, but it isn't. Junior, pick your teeth up, and hold my belt tight, because I'm taking it back. Faction one. Life Super Show, Gary Sack versus The Rising Sun, Part 1. Part 2 happens at the BTV when my title is actually on the line. I would say I would give a shit about this match, but I really don't. Because it's not beneficial to me. What, just so we get bragging rights? Shit, I don't need bragging rights because, well, let's be honest. I'm already bragging because I am the champion, Gary. I don't need to win this match to show you that, oh, look... The Rising Sun beat me in a non-title match. The non-title match don't mean shit to me. I won this title against a bastard. One of the greatest here in the BTB. I took this from him and I became king of the Native States Division. You was once king, but you got dethroned. It's your own pitiful fault you didn't get your rematch. And now you want it because it's in my hands? You don't like where this title is? Come do something about it. At the BTV, I'm going to show you no mercy. Tonight, I'm taking it easy. Just because this isn't on the line. So I don't have to worry about a New York rat getting my title. My title. Something I worked for. You're a hell of a competitor, Gary. But guess what? You ain't shit to me. You was never shit. You never will be shit. So when we're in that ring... And I beat the living hell out of you. And I leave you laying in London where you're going to be taking gasps of air as I'm choking your ass out. And Juan Legacy Rosario is going to have to stop the match 
because you can't compete. You can't keep up with the rising sun. You never could. You never will. This is just a little taste of what you're getting at the BTV when my title is on the line. So take a good long look because you're looking at your native states champion from now till I say when. And it's not against you and it never will be you. You thought you had it. You never did. You never will. And you'll never see this title again. You got one more glimpse of it at the BTV. And then I rid of you from this division once and for all. chosen one do you really think that I wasn't going to look down from you on my mountain and tell you that what I've seen from the national promo champion has been a vacation of such your title reign has been less than stellar your reign period has been obsolete and that's why the man has to look down at you and figure out why did it take so long for the man to really get his opportunity to face you one-on-one -on -one for the prestigious national promo title? I understand that I have to go through you one time just to make it official, which is fine, which is what I'm going to do tonight. And I'm going to continue to look down from you from my perch of where my greatness and my success states, where I sit atop the mountain of all the fallen who faced the man. And yes, like I said before, your feeble victory was just a gift, sir, a one-time thing. And now, once you climb into the ring with me, no meme, no video of my perfect, exquisite life could save you from the torment and detriment that's going to happen this Sunday, tonight. You see, after I take over the number one contendership for the National Promo Championship, I'm going to face you in two weeks at the BTV. And I again am going to end your reign of such a vacation and lackluster reign of being the National Promo Champion and have it become the best title ever to face and inject it with the atmosphere of success that only the man can bring it. Sir, you're going to have not a nice day, but a great day once you finally realize I am your new national promo champion. The man will always have a great day, y'all. You do the same. BTB. It is an absolute joke that I am sitting here right now. It's an absolute joke that I'm having this match right now. You see, the man, this is nothing against you, but you've had your opportunity. In fact, you've had you've had more opportunities at titles than anybody else in BTB, and you've wasted every single one of them. And the reason I'm told you were given this match is because you're the only person that's asking 
for title matches and what does that tell you about the state of BTB? What does that tell you about how your leaders don't know how to build the talent? What does that tell you about everything? You see, this group used to be the pinnacle. This group used to be the top tier. This is where you used to come if you wanted to prove yourself. And now, now this group has become the biggest joke in the E-Fed world. The problem is nobody's laughing. In fact, it's just sad. It is very, very pathetic. Chris, I beat you as the man. I beat you as Chris like Chuck Norris. But you know what? I started thinking and maybe, just maybe we should switch names. Maybe I'm not the chosen one. Maybe that's you because you keep getting chosen for title matches and you keep getting your ass kicked every single time. You keep getting chosen for me to beat your ass. And that's what I'm going to do now. Just like I've done the two times before this. <clears throat> Maybe, in fact, my name should be the man because I am the only man in BTB that has been the longest reigning champion for the National Promo Championship. My run is not going to come to an end until I absolutely want it to come to an end. Chris, this has been your only warning. If you try to come up to me again... There will be no more Chris like Chuck Norris. There will be no more The Man. There will be no more Chris Norris. Juan Rosario, do better. Give me better matches or else I'm going to take this title. I'm going to throw it in the trash. And then BTB can kiss my ass. Sean, Stunning G, Faction, represent, right? You represent. The only thing you represent in the faction is that you are nothing but a walking failure. You throw a belt around your waist or over your shoulder and you think you're a success. But I am here to not only shut you up and put you fucking down, but I am here to tell you that you are nothing. You have always been nothing. I tell you this, I preach this, and I will keep on saying it. The peak of your career was when you were going for that title. Now that you have it, you are nothing. You are nothing but an emotionally drained, you are satisfied with what you put out. And the fact that you are satisfied with the lackluster shit you put out says so much about who you are as not only a character or a person who cuts promos, but speaks about you as a person. Look at me, look at this background. It's a mess, right? That was my first world championship reign. My first world championship reign was a mess. Nothing but a mess. I couldn't do anything to save it, even if I wanted to. Then we go to my second, my second reign. And I don't have the picture to prove it, but my second reign is probably the best that BTB will ever see, not only out of me as a world heavyweight champion, but it will be the best that they will ever, 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 ever ever see all right sean so now after i take this brass knuckles championship they're gonna see a very steady incline in challengers contenders and competition for that brass knuckles championship and do you want to know why because people hate me people want to see me fail when they see me succeed when they see me succeed against you when they see me succeed against you, they're going to want to see me fail. So they're going to try to be the ones to make me fail. And whenever I beat them, I'm going to make damn sure that they fail. And I'm going to make damn sure that they're so mad that they want to leave this place because they can't stand seeing me succeed. It's people like you, Stunning G. You want to see me succeed, but you are nothing. You have always been nothing because all you do is you lurk in the shadows and hope that you are never going to be found. But here I am. I got the flashlight in hand turned on, pointed right at your homeless ass. I'm going to take that Brass Knuckles Championship away from you, throw you in a homeless shelter, and I'm going to go on to be the best damn Brass Knuckles Champion that there ever will be.
It's amazing how one man's fall from greatness can impact an entire nation. How one man can change the landscape in three seconds. One, two, three. BTB 801 Live Super Show, London, England. Stunner Gordioso is here for business. You see, Jacob, me and you, our paths never crossed. But I knew it was a matter of time before that would happen. I knew the stakes had to be higher enough for me and you to lock up. And it just so happens to be London, England, where it's going to go down. The super show of all super shows. Stunning G, the Brass Knuckles champion versus Brett Jacobs, the former BTB world heavyweight chump. And nowadays when I use the word heavyweight, I thread lightly because you turned into one hell of a heavyweight over the past couple of months as I see you sit in your crappy apartment going live after live as I see you sit at one of your two crappy jobs doing live after live it's quite obvious you have two crappy jobs you know how I know that because you need two jobs to afford to live in that crappy apartment where your hair thinning every day you want to talk about mine? That's all fine. That's all dandy. Because that's the only thing you can talk about. Because come tonight, you ain't going to be able to talk about being the Brass Knuckles champion. You ain't going to be able to talk about taking Stunner Gordioso out like you claimed you would. You know, it's getting scarier and scarier to look at you. Looking like the Scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz. Well, if you only had a brain, you would know that a match with Stun and Gordioso is bad for your health. You see, when we get into the ring, I already know what you're all about. You're going to ridicule me how I have no class, right? Well, it looks like I have class now, don't it? You're going to ridicule me on how I'm a loser, right? Well, I got news for you. Come tonight in London, England, there will be only one loser, and you are not looking at him. You need to look at yourself for that one. Because you see, Brett Jacobs, you ain't got nothing to lose. Everything to gain. Whether I beat you or not, you will still be the number one contender towards conceding's belt. And I have no problem with that. See, we don't agree on a lot of things, but the one thing that I can agree on with you is you actually deserve that shot. That's why I'm not trying to take it from you. But when I defeat you tonight in the middle of the ring for the one, two, three, I will also have gained something. I will gain the right to throw my name in the hat. I will gain the right to call myself a contender for the BTB. Heavyweight Championship. So I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to defend my Brass Knuckles Championship. For as long and for as hard as necessary. And when I'm all done with that. And I've seen you. And I see old school. And I see all the rest. Fail. And taken out. Conceded. Stun and G will step back in. Stun and G will come and finish the job. Because if there's any man who can go toe for toe, blow for blow, and word for word with the sea man, it's the G man. And with that being said, it is still your brass knuckles champion. And it is still the faction. One.
BTB. So here I am, four on one. For what? Well, let me tell you for what. Because BTB can't accept the fact that I'm the next world heavyweight champion here, and they can't stand it. Because see, the real reality of it all is, Half of you didn't want me here. Half of you didn't want me to return to BTB when I did. I saw your little post. Make him earn it. Make him do this. Make him do that. Well, this is for all of you that ran your mouth about old school returning. And then you all said, oh, old school ain't going to be brass knuckle champion again. Don't worry. And I destroyed a king and took him off his throne. And now I get John Riggins, the ultraviolet man. Well, John, I'm going to take that bubble bar back, turn that son of a bitch right up sideways and put it in your ass. And while you're too busy trying to figure out, oh, how, how do I get it out? Ow, ow, how do I get it out? Without ripping your rectum completely out of your body. Then I move on to Richie Ward. Hey, I know, Richie, you're telling everybody you're not a member of the board yet because you're still a champion here. You're still a fighter here. You're still a competitor here. But regardless of the fact, you were a part of that board before that was screwing old school. So now I've got to beat the living hell out of you. I've got to choke you until you turn blue. Because I'm tired of the rhetoric bullshit here in BTB. The king of the pipe bomb, I'm always going to be here. They tried to run me out before, and yet I'm still here. So, Richie, as I beat the living hell out of you, and I punch on you, and I throw you into the ring ropes, and I give you that spine buster from hell. Hmm. Then I wonder, does the other guy, Omega, really even want to go? As he stands in a corner, and he gives me the nod, and we know that we have already had our deal set in place. The money was paid. I guaranteed the man the leadership of war. And look, you haven't heard from the national promo champion since that the man Omega put a chair on his back. Now, for the fourth guy, whoever the hell you are, I don't care. Let me go down a list of potential prospects that Juan may pull out. Father Ludacris, Papa Ludacris, any of those. I beat you before, and I will defeat you again. But then we add King Dot, who is a personal friend of Juan's. Well, King Dot, if you put yourself in this matchup, once again, your crown will get crushed and your throne will be taken away. And then we have, huh, well, Cam Fury, the internet champion. Well, Cam, you see me looking down a lot, don't you? But I ain't reading shit down there. I'm looking you in the face and calling it like it is. I'm a pure, real deal promo artist. Never wrote nothing. All straight from here. And I'll beat your ass, too. The sad thing is your title ain't on the line, so, oh well, it is what it is. But, hell, you could even pull out the little bit of cash you got there, Juan, and get the Sandman to come back, and I'll bitch slap his ass too. So number four, I don't care who you are. This is my time. This is the old school era. I own BTB. That ring is mine. That world title is mine. And oh yeah, concede it. When you're done rubbing nose with the celebrities, why don't you step in the ring with the real promo legend and take your loss like a man? Huh. And as for you and that world heavyweight title, BTB, your reality will be this. Old school's your next champ, and there's not a damn thing any of you can do to stop it. Old school's done with this bullshit. What's in England? He won't lie. Super strong. <laughs> old school, all right, old school. You think I'm gonna let your ass leave the ring bare and breathing? <laughs> I think not. See, when the warning's done with you, you'll barely be breathing with an inch of your life. See, we never met in the ring, face to face. The time has come. The time is now. You see, the warden has been waiting in the long time to get down and dirty in the ring with the whole school. <laughs> The warning is gonna make it damn clear, you son of a bitch. 
You're not leaving the ring breathing. If you think you'll make it after me into the next, think again. <laughs> because the warning that it will lights out the phone check. And the warning is going to hit you something you'll never forget. <laughs> Move on if I let you survive if you can. <laughs> oh, fool. Okay, let's cut to the chase. I know a lot of you don't like me. But I'm here to put a name out there that everyone will remember, regardless you like me or not. Seems like they put me up with old school. The fourth individual in this match. Make no mistake about it. Bad things happen when you scorn a violent, merciless individual. Bad things happen to good people. And honestly, it's about to get a lot, lot worse. Nation, you killed the saint in me. How dare you martyr me? <laughs> I'll never kill myself to save my soul. But old school, it seems like yours is ripe for the picking. And let this be a message to anybody who thinks that they can hold the unsainted John Reagan's back. Because you hold me to a lighter side, you are making a mistake of a lifetime! The unsainted one does not care for your well-being. Gonna be a proven essence, regardless who the hell you think you are. <laughs> ashes, ashes, old school falls down. <laughs> BTB. You see, the last time I stood in this squared circle, I attacked the Chosen One. I took him out, and the only reason that he still holds that national title is because I got him DQ'd. And it wasn't for the betterment of war enterprises. It was for own personal reasons. And now tonight, I stand as a barrier against old school, against the man that the Chosen One went up against that night, against the man who continues to tell the BTB that Omega paid him to take out the Chosen One. So tonight, I have the honor of taking out old school. See, in BTB, you all think this is the match that we've waited for. They faced off once before, and Omega slightly got that victory. Doesn't matter how, but I got the victory. And everybody has been talking. We want to see Omega versus Old School Part 2. We want to see Omega versus Old School in a cage match. We want to see Omega versus Old School in no holds barred match. I'm going to tell you what you're going to see between Omega and Old School Tonight, tonight, what you're going to see So Omega pull out his pocketbook. And Omega's going to go find that 
that blank check that he hasn't written yet. And Omega is going to go ahead and grab his pen. And Omega's going to make a check to old school. Because Omega feels like somebody needs to take that damn title off of Jamie Clump, off of Conceited. Somebody needs to take that title off. And I frankly don't care who it is. I only care that it's off of them. So tonight, old school, this check, it's written to you. And I want you to get the job done again, Omega. Well, well, surprised old school? <laughs> I mean, I know he didn't think Juan was going to let this ride without having a trick up his sleeve. You see, the Mac loves to make statements, and that I shall do. You see, once we were compadres, then you wanted to go from Hulkamania to Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And I'm not going to sit here and state the obvious, even though you're looking like something that came from Death Valley. I'm not going to sit here and talk about you being a leech, about you having to pick a person, a competitor, a group to attach yourself to. No, 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 no. Because even I know sometimes leeches do find success. And that seems to be your complaint. Your lack of success. Well, maybe it's time you look in the mirror. Let's look at your track record. You seem to be the roll tide of BTB. Plowing through cupcakes and getting your ass handed to you by the only worthy competitors you face. And I'm here today to make sure that happens once again. You see, old school, it's been a long time coming. And me and you both know you should have stayed in your place. As a mouthpiece, as a manager. Because once you entered the competitor world, you just lack everything it takes. You lack it all. See, this is a new time. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Them old school tactics are played out. They're for the 80s where they belong. So leave them there. We're tired of seeing it. We're tired of hearing it. In old school, the one fact that everybody seems to be overlooking is when you do attach yourself to someone, they fall just as well. Every single person, gone, missing, at the bottom of the barrel. And it's not too long before Jamie finds that same fate. Because you're nothing but a disease. Something that just gets people sick. <laughs> and old school, don't be surprised. Don't be mad. Don't be upset. Because I know you want to see me again down the road. <laughs> and I'll be waiting. So I hope you enjoy this little masterpiece. Something you never will be able to create.